Hi there, welcome to Houston DIY. This is part two to our Echo Hub review. I'm gonna go through the first few days of our experience with the Echo Hub. Okay, so we've had the Echo Hub now three, four days, if that. Um, so the first video, which I'll link to up here, we went through the installation setup process using the Echo Hub. Really easy to set up, um, but if you've watched that video, or if you'll have seen we had issues with the power over ethernet setup. Um, so I've spent the last few days looking at ways and working out how to get power over ethernet working. So to be honest with you, it's been a little bit of um, a problem or an issue trying to get this working. Uh, not much support out there from Amazon. Um, so I've been looking on Reddit in terms of people on there doing the same thing. There's been some use, some really helpful people out there kind of helping each other out, trying to get this working. And I can safely say today or yesterday, we, I got this working in our house. So I've had to do a bit of trial and error. So I've got, I've had multiple products, multiple adapters, PoE adapters, etc., etc. So yes, yeah, so I've been through multiple uh, PoE injectors, different injectors, different PoE splitters and adapters and all sorts. Uh, but I finally got two that work. So I will link below in the description, uh, but these are the products I've got. So this is a tender power over ethernet injector. So that's the injector I've gone for. The specifications will, will be below. Um, I did ho already have this injector from the previous install for the Raspberry Pi. Um, so I already had that, so that was working. I wasn't using it, but I'd already bought it. I think I'm gonna use it for another install. So I already had that, but again, I will link below. I think this is about 15 pounds for the injector. Now, the second part, which is kind of the uh, splitter or the part that goes into the Echo Hub. So this has got the power over Ethernet connection and it's got a USB type C port there. So basically the USB type C cable goes into it and then that plugs into the Echo Hub. So that's the, the, the missing piece of the puzzle. Now this was £60 just for this bit of kit, which is a lot. It's too much really. Um, if you didn't already have it, then it's a massive investment on top of the Echo Hub already, which in my view is probably at 160 pounds, quite a lot. Um, so this is 60 pounds, so it's you know it's more than a third of the cost of the hub. Um, but anyway, it works. I've got it working. I've been wanting this device for a long time. I was quite adamant I wanted to get it working, um, and this was the the device we wanted to use. So this video, I'm going to show it working in a second. I'm going to plug it all back in, working on the wall, go through some of the the things I've done with it so far. Um, and just kind of a, a, a second phase review. Okay, we're back in the bedroom with the giant hole in the wall. So if you, didn't, if you saw on video number one we did, we had the hole in the wall, we had the Raspberry Pi installed in there with a touchscreen. So the hole there was for the Raspberry Pi to fit in with a touchscreen connected on the front. Um, so this hole is too big for the mounting plate that comes with the Echo Hub. So I've had to do some um, mounting um, hackery. Is that a right word? So I've used some commander strips on the wall and on the back, on the back of the Echo Hub. So you see command strips there. Command strips are brilliant. This is a lightweight device. Um, it's lighter than probably some of the photo frames we've got in the house. I've doubled it up, so I've got one on each side and that will be absolutely fine on that wall there. So that's how we're gonna connect. So at the moment inside there, I've got the, uh, the POE splitter or the adapter, let's call it, that's got the USB Type-C cable plugged in. Again, that is pushed onto that back wall using another command strip. These are very, very handy. Uh, but that, again, was quite a lightweight, so that will hold in there fine. It's got the USB-C cable ready here to plug in to the device. Once that's, in, once that's plugged in, it'll power on, and we can simply connect it to the wall. So what I'll do, live on camera, is I'll plug this USB in. And hopefully you will see it come to life. So previously... When we did this with the other adapter, sorry, I'm out of view, um, we got the insufficient power warning on the screen. So fingers crossed it's still working. We'll just give it a second. It takes a few seconds to boot up. There we go. So we've got the Echo um, icon there, logo there, booting up now. So what I'll do is I'll stick it to the wall. We'll get closer in with the camera and you can check out what's going on. Okay, hopefully you can see the screen working there. All on, powered on, no wires below coming up. All power from behind with the uh, power over Ethernet working. Bit of an expensive option. It's what I wanted though. It's all what I've, what I've always wanted on this wall was an, um, an, a touchscreen device working. I know people have commented previously on the other video I did about using an Android tablet. 
But I want something out of the box, just working, stick on the wall, cost a bit more money in terms of the adapter, but I've got it working now. So whether I'll use this long, long term, we'll see, but I'm going to use the next few weeks to decide if I'm going to keep this on the wall. Um, so I've done some testing with this the last couple of days, got things set up a little bit better, tried out a few things. So I'm going to step through them now. So I'll get my head out of the way. We'll get concentrated and zoomed in on the screen a little bit and just show you a couple of things that I've done and a couple of things that I've found and a couple of other things you can kind of try. Okay, so as you can see, this is the main screen. Obviously, we saw that before. You've got the home screen for the actual device. Um, on here, I've got the cameras, I've got temperature control, uh, I've got weather, events, etc. Everything you'd expect from your Echo Show devices. I've still found that the responsiveness of the screen is much better than the Echo, other Echo devices. Um, it's faster, it's zippier. There is a little bit of lag, I'll be totally honest with you, when you're clicking between things. There's a little bit of a lag, like you see there, just dropping between into a different group. Um, you can see that. If I drop into cameras, so there's a bit of a loading screen. Uh, I've got all Blink cameras, so there's no preview. They're not supported. It's only Ring devices that are supported. Uh, but again, I'll just show you, just to show you what's going on. If I click on camera there, that's actually the Echo Show 15 that we've got downstairs. Um, so you can see there's a camera view there uh, from the Echo Show 15. But again, you don't get the preview in the cameras tab or the camera uh, icons there. It's just a simple name for the device. So that's cameras. Um, I've added a separate group, which is called temperature control which has actually got all our Hive uh, thermostat radiator valves in. Um, so these are all the radiators we've got in the house that have got um, a Hive radiator valve on there. So you can see all the temperature controls. You can individually control them from the touch panel all on one view. This isn't unique to the Echo, Echo Hub, but kind of shows you the control and what you can do on there uh, with the Echo Hub. This has got obviously got Alexa built into it, so I've just muted it at the moment so it didn't kick it off. Other devices may have started in the house. But what I'll do is just show a couple of things on there in terms of the control with voice. Um, so let's do that now. Alexa, what's the weather tomorrow, please? Here's the forecast for tomorrow in Salby Bridge. Expect showers with a high of 6 degrees Celsius and a low of 1 degree. Okay, so the weather outlook's not looking great around here at the moment, uh, but you can see there, it does the weather as expected. Uh, go back to the home screen. Um, the other thing I've done with this, I have loaded on um, my some of my photos into the uh, into an Amazon folder, um, and this, by default, will drop, drop into a photo frame view after a certain amount of time. Um, just to show this, though, just to show, I think I showed this on the previous video, but obviously you've got different photos. Um, that you've loaded in, manually into um, into there. So that's as expected, and that's the same on the other Echo Show devices. Okay, I've got some music playing on a device in the office at the moment. So if I click on the active, active media button there, this will show me any active media I've got playing in the house or on my Echo devices. So you can see I've got some Kings of Leon playing there on there. Um, so you can obviously control that here from one central place um, on other devices. Again, that's the same on other Echo devices, but it's showing you, showing you it on the hub. Okay, so in terms of playing music on this device, um, you can play it on here. I've tested it a little bit with uh, with audio so far. The audio quality is not like um, Sonos level, or even the Echo Show 8 is really, really good in my opinion uh, for a portable speaker like that, or not a portable speaker, sorry, for a smart home device like that. Um, the sound is pretty good, probably comparable to the Echo Show 15. Okay, so in terms of audio, I've got this device here, the Echo Hub. I've also got an Echo Spot over in the corner on the bedside table. Um, I've got a group on here, which you might better see, hopefully, which is a bedroom group within the Amazon application. And I've got this speaker plus the Echo Spot speaker in one group. So this will play on this device and also the Echo Spot over there. So, Alexa, play some music. Here's a mix for you on Amazon Music. Hopefully this video won't get flagged for copyright. I've only played a few seconds of a particular song there. But in terms of the audio, nice and loud. There's little lacking in bass, I would say, um, in terms of the speakers. Uh, you can adjust that in the settings, though. Um, so you go to settings, uh, into here, and go to sounds. There is an equaliser, and you can adjust the bass, mid-tones, and treble. So you can up the bass if you prefer, or put it down, or whatever you would like, uh, just to change those settings. So it is adjustable. I would just say that though, in terms of bassiness, which I think the Echo Show 8 has got really good sound quality. It's just not as good, I would say, but it's still loud enough for kind of a bedroom setting or a communal setting where you need some music on. 
Okay, just one more thing to just to show on this, just to show it working. Um, so on the Echo Show 15 downstairs, I do use the Silk browser quite a lot uh, to watch YouTube, go on Instagram, watch kind of recipe videos. Um, so just to show you that in action, I'll show you that working. Alexa, open Silk browser. Here is Silk. Okay, so we've got the Silk browser here. You can obviously navigate to whatever website you want. I'm going to go to YouTube.com. Okay, so you can see we've got uh, YouTube on here now. So if I search for in here... Um, Houston DIY. So you can see we've got the Houston DIY channel here. I'm going to go to my actual channel, click on videos, and we can play the previous video, which was the Echo Hub. Okay, so here we are. Hi, welcome to Houston DIY. In this video, we're going to unbox and install this, the Echo Show Hub. <laughs> Well, there you can see it working there. So I'm going to go full screen with that. I'm going to play that there. Okay, so I managed to get his hands on an Echo Show Hub. Just been released this week uh, in the UK. So it's February the 22nd today. I think they came out yesterday, the 21st. I ordered it yesterday. It's come today. So we're going to install it. So first of all, I'm going to do an unboxing. Uh, see what we get inside. What's in Okay, so you can see YouTube working. You can obviously navigate through there. No problems whatsoever. You can sign in. Um, sign into the actual, uh, your account on there. So you've got your own account on there. I've not done that yet. But you can see you can quite easily use uh, that to watch YouTube videos. Uh, I will use this in the bedroom while I've got YouTube on. Um, so that's just one example of um, obviously something to do. You can go on any other website as well. So you can search on Google as well. Uh, go on Instagram, go on anything you want directly on here. So that's nothing uh, That's nothing unique to the Echo Hub. It's on the Echo Show devices. But just to show you that that it does work on here as well. Uh, just to show you there, it can go into desktop mode. You will have noticed it opened up in mobile, mobile view. But if I go there, it should open up in a full browser experience, which is probably a better experience, even though we are on a smaller device. Okay, that's everything I wanted to cover on this video today with the uh, Echo Hub. Uh, working really well now. Obviously got the power over ethernet all working behind that screen. I will put links in the description uh, to the products I've used to get that working. Again, from an Amazon perspective, it's not great. It wasn't great support in terms of that compatibility list. I have fed that back into Amazon via the customer support. I went on the chat with them a couple of times and fed that back in. I've also submitted a review on the actual product page and I've sent um, a comment in there onto Amazon as well just to feed that back on the product. Um, whether that will change, hopefully they put some devices on the compatible list. I know on the US product page there is, they've got a, a specific device on there that you should use. So hopefully they add one on to the UK one. It might be the one I've got, it might be something different, I'm not sure. But as you can see, it's all working fine on there. Um, so next few days, maybe a week or so, I will do a full kind of test on this get it fully working and do a bit of a longer term review on its usage. Um, I've only used it for a couple of days and I've only had it actually on the wall today as well. So we'll see how it fits into our life in terms of playing uh, YouTube on it, uh, kind of doing daily tasks on it, things like that, see how it fits in and hopefully it fits into our Echo ecosystem really well. Okay, if you've got any questions or comments, anything at all about the Echo Hub, about our install, about the power over ethernet stuff we've done, please drop that into the comment section. I will reply to all questions and comments just to let you know our experience, etc. Um, if you've got anything you want me to try on the Echo Hub, uh, I can do a separate video or I'll add it into the further review video, but please drop that below in the comment section. Uh, I'm looking for feedback, kind of any, any ideas, questions from anyone at all. So drop that in there if, you, if, you, if you're interested. Um, if you've liked the video, if it's been informative at least, please give it a thumbs up, give it a like. If not for any reason, give it a thumbs down, give it a dislike. If you want to follow the Houston DIY channel for more product reviews, uh, like this one with the Echo Hub, we do some VR stuff with the MetaQuest 3, other home DIY projects, hit that subscribe button, and hopefully we'll see you in a future video.